How's it going guys? My name is Luis. Hope you guys had a happy new year and hope it's off to a great start. 2017 was a really busy year for me. I've reviewed the most amount of games I've ever done in a single year, so I've been really busy on my YouTube channel if you haven't noticed. But a lot of you guys recommended me to do a video on my must-have games for each one of the main consoles, so the Nintendo Switch, the Xbox One, and the PS4. And so that's what this is. This is my Nintendo Switch video. I'll be doing one for the Xbox One and the PS4 later this month as well. Now keep in mind these are games I've played before, these are games I mostly have reviewed, not all of them I have reviewed, but if you want more in-depth thoughts for each one of these titles, I'd recommend looking them up on my channel and see if there's a full in-depth review for them just because chances are I already did one. But I also want to put that out there just because a lot of people are going to say why isn't this game on the list, why isn't this game on the list, and it's because I probably haven't played it yet so I can't really recommend something that I haven't really played. It would be very dishonest for me to do that. But just keep that in mind, if you do have any recommendations that aren't in this video, please leave them in the comment section down below so you can help other people that are watching this video learn about other great games they should be playing. With all that said, let's jump right into my recommendation list in no particular order. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was game of the year for many people last year, including myself. It completely restructured the Legend of Zelda formula as an open world exploration game that has you traveling from shrine to shrine solving puzzles. Throughout the game you felt completely immersed in the world, completely astonished that you could even play this on the go to begin with, even if it did have a few hiccups here and there with the frame rate. Through word of mouth, Breath of the Wild was the first Zelda game for a lot of the people last year, and it's sure to be the first of many. Super Mario Odyssey was the return to form for the Mario series to a gameplay formula more in line with Super Mario 64 and Sunshine. Using Mario's new friend Cappy, you can capture enemies and objects to transform Mario, giving him new powers to solve platforming puzzles. Super Mario Odyssey was one of the most fun and charming games of last year, filled with personality and moments of joy that are sure to put a smile on anyone that's ever played a Mario game before. Plus, all the music was really catchy too. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a port of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, now over to the Switch. You can think of this port as a complete edition that adds in all the DLC from the Wii U version and adds in a new battle mode that's more in line with the battle modes of Mario Kart DS and Wii. This new version also adds improved performance, bumping the resolution of the game to 1080p rather than 720p when it's docked. Best of all, you get one of the best games of the Wii U now on the Nintendo Switch on the go with improved performance, more content, and pretty much seamless local multiplayer thanks to that single Joy-Con play. Splatoon 2 is the sequel to Nintendo's odd and strangely addicting third-person ink shooter, Splatoon. Splatoon 2 is very much more of the same gameplay, adding in new content and slight variations of the techniques in the battle system. There's a new single-player story mode that while it may not be the main attraction of the game, it's still pretty fun and it doesn't take away from the still addicting online turf wars. Golf Story is a gem of an indie game that combines a retro golf simulator with quirky RPG roots of something like Earthbound. That may not sound like the most appealing combination for a game, and I can vouch for that because I hate golf, but somehow I still really love this game. Golf Story easily turned out to be one of the most fun and charming games I had to review last year. Currently, it's exclusive to the Switch, so if you do have one, definitely go ahead and give it a shot because there's no word yet if it's coming to other platforms at the moment. ARMS is another new IP breakout from Nintendo just like Splatoon was. It may not be as popular or on the same caliber as Splatoon was, but it's still a fun sparring game to play with friends locally or online. Using the Joy-Cons as your motion control arms or just playing with a traditional controller, you can shoot out your arms in this whole futuristic like punch out gameplay that's really fun and entertaining. Plus the characters are really cool. Skyrim is still very much Skyrim that you played back in 2011. It's sort of a middle ground on the Switch. You won't get the performance of something like the PS4 or Xbox One version, but the compromise on performance is still relatively good giving you a true Skyrim experience on the go and on the TV when you're docking on the console. So yes, that technically means you still get all the glitches and bugs that Skyrim is known for on the Switch, but you also get the definitive version of it on the go, which is still pretty cool. Doom, another Bethesda title that's something you'll probably end up seeing as a trend on the Nintendo Switch. Bethesda is currently one of the biggest third party supporters on the Switch, bringing games like Skyrim and Doom to the Switch, but also Wolfenstein 2 in the future. Anyway, Doom on the Switch does run at a lower resolution and frame rate than other platforms, yet it still feels very much like Doom thanks to the fast paced nature of the gameplay. Doom was one of the best shooters of 2016 with a great soundtrack and now you can play it on the go with the Nintendo Switch while still having all the features of something like the online multiplayer in your pocket. For all you Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, or in general life simulator fans, you can scratch that gaming itch with Stardew Valley for the Nintendo Switch. In Stardew Valley you play as a character who ditches their traditional life and instead takes over their grandfather's farm in the small town of Stardew Valley. As you manage the farm, you also spend your time on social interactions with other characters that lead to various activities within the game, like marriage. 
It's one of the breakout indie games of recent years, and now it's on the Switch as well. SteamWorld Dig 2 picks up after the events of SteamWorld Dig 1, and it's also one of my favorite games of 2017. SteamWorld Dig 2 has you play as Dorothy, a girl looking for her lost friend in a game that's very reminiscent of Metroidvania gameplay. Essentially, it's a game that gives you powers throughout the campaign and then has you go back to different paths that you've already discovered to unlock new paths with your newly found powers. SteamWorld Dig 2 was a ton of fun to play through and enjoy the review. Definitely an indie game worth checking out. Sonic Mania was a return to form for the Sonic series, back to the classic Sega Genesis games for Sonic 1 through 3. Made by a team of fans who are known for modding classic Sonic games, Sonic Mania truly is a love letter to the classic series, that even though it is mostly remixed stages rather than new stages, the game was still an incredible throwback and easily a contender for game of the year for me. Every now and then I'll boot up the game to play a few acts and listen to that beautiful Best Friends opening track in the beginning of the game. Puyo Puyo Tetris is also from Sega and sort of a surprise hit for me, one that I wasn't really expecting. I mean, I like Tetris and I somewhat like Puyo Puyo, but there's something about always having the game downloaded on my system with the ability to play local multiplayer, so easily thanks to the Joy-Con that it's become my go-to party game. Every time I have friends over, especially if we have a bottle of bourbon open, I turn on Puyo Puyo Tetris and let four players just go at it. It's always a blast to play, and it is a classic. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is still pretty new at the moment. It's an incredibly large open world JRPG on the Switch that has you play as a nobody boy turned hero when he finds a powerful blade named Pyra that just about every bad guy in the world wants to get their hands on. If you've played Xenoblade Chronicles 1 or X before, I'm sure you'll love this one, and if you haven't played any of the series yet, you can jump straight into this one without any context. You'll still be in for an enjoyable and incredible 70 plus hour JRPG experience. Rocket League. Well, I think everybody knows what it is already, but just in case, Rocket League is the result of combining RC cars with soccer. It sounds incredibly weird, yet it's very thrilling and entertaining. Even someone like me that doesn't enjoy really watching or playing real life soccer or soccer games, I still have fun playing Rocket League, especially if I'm playing online with my friends. If you have friends that own the game on Xbox One or PC or on the Switch, you can still crossplay with them on the Switch, whether you're on the go or playing in a dock. Oh, and you get some pretty cool Nintendo accessories in this version of the game too. Overcooked didn't launch too great on the Switch, it had a few frame rate issues, but luckily since the game has been patched to work better, now it truly is one of the best indie games on the Switch. You essentially fill out orders given to you as you switch between multiple chefs and puzzle-like kitchen. It's a fun and thrilling game when you play it alone, but that enjoyment gets multiplied with every person you throw into the game because it supports up to 4 players and it even supports single Joy-Con use, so you can pretty much play local multiplayer right from the get-go. For any old school Zelda fans that like Link to the Past, you're going to want to check out Kamiko. Kamiko is a top-down action game that has a very bright and colorful art style to it that looks absolutely beautiful. You can play as multiple heroes, each with their own weapons as you fight your way through levels and solve puzzles that end with a boss fight. Best of all, the game is incredibly cheap. I think I paid maybe $5 for it a year ago, I can't recall, but it was definitely under $10. It's an incredibly cheap game and definitely worth your money. Implosion was a surprise hit for me, originating as a mobile game that I really didn't think too much of initially, but once I started playing, I was pretty hooked. Implosion is a hack and slash top down game that changes camera views from time to time for a more cinematic look. You play as Jake, a mech suit pilot that's given the task of saving the world from invading aliens. Despite the game being a mobile game though, this title features fully voiced dialogue and cutscenes, definitely helping it stand out among other indie games, and even just mobile games in general that are now ported over to the Switch. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle was probably one of the worst kept secrets of last year, but that's okay because despite it sounding horrible in thought, it turned out to be a very fun strategy game with a ton of personality. That's coming from someone that despises the Rabbids. Oddly enough, in this game they have a sense of charm to them that's both funny and admirable, and it surprisingly fits very well with the XCOM-like gameplay in the world of Super Mario. The game also got a free versus multiplayer mode, adding on to the content that the game launched with. For those of you waiting for a new F-Zero game, we'll keep on waiting, or just play Fast RMX instead. Fast RMX is an indie game that's very similar to games like F-Zero and Wipeout. Race down super fast speed tracks as you change the color of your ship to coordinate with the color of the speed pads on the ground. The game runs at a smooth 1080p60 and offers both local and online multiplayer. It may not be F-Zero on the Switch, but it's pretty darn close. Those are my current recommendations for must-have Switch games. Of course, there are a ton of other worthy Switch games, I just don't have all the time in the world to list them all, and I haven't played them all. But if you have any recommendations of your own that I didn't include in this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And those of you watching, please do check out the comments for any more recommendations. Keep buying Switch games if you have money to spend and you want more games to play, so definitely check out the comments. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and stay tuned, I'll be doing a video just like this for the Xbox One and PS4 in the future, and probably by the time you're watching this, I'm somewhere in Mexico visiting some family for the weekend, so sorry if I don't reply to the comments right away, I don't really know the internet situation down there, but 
Thank you very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great happy new year and I'll see you all in the next one.